everyone, I'm Tess from the Arty Crafty Place and thank you for joining me for a new block printing project video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to print your very own patterned tile cushion cover. On our blog you'll find a project on printing a set of patterned cushion covers. Now we printed a set of six cushions for our garden and they look so beautiful and so colourful. We've also made a set for our studio here in Oxfordshire and I'm going to show you how to print your own. So I'm going to be showing you how to work out spacing, lining up your repeat printing block and using multiple colours on the same design. So I'm going to be showing you with a range of different tile printing blocks and there's a few different techniques to use with matching them up and lining up your prints and how to create the perfect repeat. So I'm going to be sharing with you tips in this project video on how to do that. You'll then be able to go away and print your own pattern towel cushion cover, but also use the techniques you'll learn to print other items such as tea towels, drawstring bags, lampshades, the list goes on. So I'm going to change the camera to overhead and we'll get started. So for printing pattern cushion covers, what you're going to want is your foam printing mat underneath you. I've got two of our large 43 by 43 centimetre mats taped together to give me a bigger surface area to print on, which is really handy. I've got plain cotton fabric for practicing on. I've got my paints on a paint tray. For this project, it's definitely going to be handy to have sponge dabbers and to have a variety of different sizes. And um, they're going to really help with your multicolor printing and getting precisely where you want a certain color. So it's good to have a whole variety of them in your collection. You're then also going to want your cotton cushion cover or whatever you're going to be printing onto and a piece of paper which is going to go inside the cushion. So there's a couple of different sorts of repeats that I wanted to show you. So there's kind of like the less technical repeats and we wanted to create a range of printing blocks that made it very easy for you to create a repeating pattern. Now one of these blocks is our Moroccan tile. So when you print this, it creates this lovely overall pattern design. But when you print it, the block doesn't need to connect with your previous print, so they don't have to be touching. You just print it next to the previous one, leaving a little gap in between, you know, a millimetre or so, and then it creates this lovely overall effect. But you're just placing the block next to the last one. So there's, you're just doing them side by side. You're not having to touch them or like interlock them, which can make it a bit more difficult. So this is a lovely print. So that's our Moroccan tile. Another one that I've done this with, which is really popular, is our Mexican tile. Now this one can interlock, so you can touch all four corners together when you print, but it's very hard to line up. So what I've done with this print is I've printed it again, the same as the Moroccan tile, just one next to the other, leaving a very little gap in between, but that means I don't have to worry about lining up perfectly. So these are non-kind of connecting blocks, but you're still able to make a lovely repeat pattern. Whereas then we do have a few other tiles, such as this patterned tile. This is pattern tile one. Now this one, when you print it, it has to connect with your previous print, so it's got to touch your previous print to create this continuous design, so that's where it is there. And you have to line it up, but it is quite difficult to do. So if you're not very confident with your printing, or you're just starting out with repeat printing blocks, stick with something that doesn't need touching, and then you can move on and advance to a block like this, where you have to touch it at points, so each print interlocks together, and then that creates, again, another overall repeat. And another one of that is our two-part Jaipur dotty circle block. So again, all four corners of the block come together to make this diamond. So I'll show you how to use both of them, but you can see that there is some that are slightly easier than others, especially if you're just starting out. So the way you print a repeat block is exactly the same as before. Um, what you first want to do is just make sure they're printing well. So you would print them with one colour first. So let's use our Moroccan tile. And I'm just going to print this all over in blue. So always print with one colour first, just to get the hang of the block. And then you can move on to doing multicolours. So I'm just tapping the paint all over several times, getting a nice coverage. 
then I'm going to turn the block upside down and give it a wiggle. So side to side, up and down, getting all the edges and then up. So a lovely print. Now that's come out really well, so I'm going to do my next one. And I'm just using one colour for now for speed because it takes a lot longer to apply multiple colours. And I'm just going to print this right next to the last print. So the way that you do it, or the best way to do it, is not to try and put the whole block down at once. What I tend to do is just touch the bottom left hand corner next to my previous print and then you have a pivot point and you can move the block and lower it down because you want to get your next print straight along your last. So I'm going to touch the bottom left hand corner down. So there you go, you can see it's down and I can move my block around and then I'm going to line it up against my last print and put it down and give it a wiggle. And that's a really great tip with when you're doing repeat printing like this and you're trying to line it up because it's very hard to get the block straight every time but by just putting a point of it down you find it a lot easier. So left hand corner is going down next to my previous print and then I can line this up. I actually did that a little bit high. It wasn't quite straight. And then again with my bottom when I want to repeat this, I then do the same, but this time I might touch the top left hand corner down and then by eye, look over the top and make sure you're lining that up. And you can see you can very quickly get a lovely repeat print and this one is very easy because you're just placing the next print n like next to the first one so it's not too difficult to do, very achievable. So I'll do one more. So I'm putting that down and then I'm lining up just slowly. So that's created a really nice print. Now let's have a look at two colour printing. So I'm going to clean my block with my dry rag, just wipe all the excess paint off. And then I'm going to go with my sponge dabbers and I'm going to do the middle blue and the outside yellow. So you can see by using your sponge dabber you're able to be really precise with where you put the paint. So I'm going to go round in a circle. And what you want to do when you're starting with multicolour printing, especially with a tile that you're going to be printing a large surface area with, is not to use too many colours because what you'll realise is it does take a long time to ink up your block. So if you've got to print this, you know, if you've got to print the block 12 or 18 or 20 times over a piece of fabric, it's going to take you a lot longer if you're doing a very detailed multicolour print. So stick to something that's relatively simple but still brings out the detail in the block. So I've gone in with my smaller dabber for the corners. And then I'm going to turn it upside down and give it a wiggle and then up so you can see I've got really nice there I've got dark blue in the middle and yellow on the edge which is lovely and when you're practicing it's a lovely time to try out different colors and things and then you end up with these swatches of fabrics which I love this is just practice fabric but you could do something with it after if you wanted to you know you could even sew them all together you could frame them you could hand embroider them so never throw away your practice pieces, they, they always can come in useful. I'm just going to do one more multicolour print with this tile. But hopefully you can see that something like this, the Moroccan tile, is very easy to repeat because it's not connecting with the last one. You're just placing it right down next to your previous print, making it a lot easier to manage. It's not too much pressure when you're lining things up. So bottom corner touching down and then I can pivot the block, move it so it lines up straight against my previous print. So there we go, that's a lovely one. Next up I'm going to show you a slightly more difficult block which is the two part Jaipur one. And it's lovely to use but some people might find it slightly more difficult. Now, with a repeat printing block, it's really useful to be printing along a straight line or a straight bit of fabric, so you can always use the bottom of your fabric, or we tend to use masking tape a lot to create a straight line. 
and then that's the line I'm going to follow when I'm printing. So this is a two-part printing block which requires all four corners touching when you print. So first of all I'm going to start with this block and I'm going to print it in teal. So I'm going to do the block all one colour. And then I'm going to put the bottom left hand corner down first against my masking tape. And then like I said you've got that pivot point. So pop it down. And then you can line it up against the bottom of your masking tape. Now when we're using repeat blocks one tip which is very helpful is to put an arrow on the block to say which way is up. Because sometimes if you're talking and you put the block down and then you pick it back up, you can sometimes pick it back up and print the wrong way, which can distort your pattern. So it's a very good idea to mark the top of the block. Now with my next one, I am going to not print it side by side, but I'm going to print it right up against it. So I want this printing block to very slightly overlap my previous print so that each print is touching. So again, I'm going to put the bottom point down where I want it, so that's very slightly overlapping the previous print, and that way I've got that pivot point so I can move the block to line it up again. And you'll see that there'll be no gap in between this print and the one I'm doing now. There we go. Now, something like this we'd say is more difficult because it requires a little bit more technique about staying straight and really lining the print up because they have to touch each time. It means you have to stay very straight. So that's why we'd say it's a more of an advanced printing block. But still very manageable to use. And then I'm going to go again ahead and do the same again and I'll show you the pattern that I make. There we go, I've done six prints and each of the corners has matched the last so they're all touching to create this diamond design in the middle. But occasionally if you're doing this sort of pattern over a large area you can become a little bit wonky and the print might not match up perfectly. So if that does happen to you what you can always do is just fill in any little gaps with a very detailed paintbrush and that will hide any of those slight imperfections. Now with this print, this solid block goes in the middle, so I'm just going to fill in the gaps uh, to create my finished print. So there we have my finished repeat print using our two-part spotty tile design. And that's created a really lovely repeat print design but you can see that this one requires slightly more concentration and technique than the Moroccan tile one that I did earlier that just needs to be placed next to the previous print it doesn't have to be matched up perfectly so you can see which block you'd like to use now for my cushion cover I'm going to use this lovely new uh, Jaipur flower tile and I'm going to I'm going to have a go with the different colors see which color combination I want and then once I've chosen those colours, I'm then ready to move on to my cushion. But what you want to do is always practice your printing block. Don't just do one print, you need to practice how it repeats. And sometimes you need to make the mistakes in order to know how to do it correctly. So always practice with the print you're going to use. I really like this teal and sage colour, which is going to look lovely in the garden. So I'm going to use that colour for my flower tile. So I've had a little play around with my colours and I have decided I'm going to do this one. So this is Indian yellow, then sage and teal. And I'm not going to do anything too precise, I'm going to let the colours blend together. But this is the pattern I'm going to do on my cushion cover and the colour combination. So I'm going to get my cover ready. And what we suggest doing when you're doing a tile repeat is always find the centre of the fabric. 
Whereas with some other designs, you might start in the top corner and work your way down and across. With a pattern, tile, you always want to work from the inside out. If you start from the top corner, you may find by the time you get to the bottom, you can't fit a full print or you're slightly off the edge or you're not very straight. So by starting in the middle and working your way out, you're going to get a lot better result. Now, one thing with our cushion covers is we don't suggest doing any half prints over the edge. You'll see with all our cushion designs, the print stops at the edge and you've got this plain border, which works really well when you're looking at your spacing. And what you do this for is that if your prints go over the edge, over the hemmed edge, if it's quite thick, like it is on our cushion covers, it can distort your prints. So by leaving a plain border, uh, it means that you avoid any problems. And also, once you've got your cushion in there, you don't really see the very edge anyway, so it just gives you a, a nice, neat finish. Now, to work out your spacing, what you're going to do is you're going to have a look at your block. Now, you can either start with your first print in the very middle of your fabric or you can have the corner of the block in the middle of your fabric. Now the way we look at this is how many full prints you're going to get. So if I start with the first print in the very middle, I'm only going to get one, two, three full prints in. So that's not very many and I'm going to have a very big plain border. Whereas if I start with the corner of the block in the centre, I'm then going to be able to fit one, two, three, four. So then I'm going to be able to fit four prints across and four prints up and down. So that's going to give me the most amount of printing space. So what you want to do is with your different size block, have a look at how many full prints you can fit in and which way is better, whether you start in the very center of the fabric or on the edge. Now what you might want to do is I've got my foam mat underneath me. So I'm going to put a piece of paper on the inside and that's going to stop any paint from going through. And you can always secure your cushion cover down with a bit of masking tape to stop it moving around when you're printing. Now don't forget to always mark on the block which way is up, especially when you start printing a big project like this because you might need to step away for a minute and then you might end up picking the block back up the wrong way. So always mark which way is up. So I'm ready to get started, so I'm first going to print the block in the centre, so I'm going to do my four prints, then I can work from the inside outwards. So this is where you'll be grateful if you didn't to do a super detailed um, colour design because it does take a while to ink the block up every time. I'm actually doing um, kind of precise yellow in the middle and then the sage and teal I'm allowing to blend a little bit more on the outside so that I get a nice kind of blended colour effect rather than doing anything too specific. One thing that we always say when you're doing multicolour printing and you're applying more than one colour to your block is always use your sponge dabber flat. Sometimes when people are trying to be so precise and get the, the paint in exactly the right place, you can end up using the corner or the edge of the sponge, which often means you don't get enough paint on your block. So really make sure that you're not doing that. Always use the sponge dabber flat and always be more cautious to apply more paint um, and be less precise. It's one of the tips we always give because you don't want to spend all that time painting your block to put it down and then get a really faint print because you can find that the paint may dry. So to start here, I'm going to put actually the bottom right hand corner of my printing block in the centre and then I'm going to line it up against my edges. So we always iron the fabric, so I fold it in half and then fold it in half again to find the centre point. And this works really well as a guide to where you should print. So you can do that with all your fabric items, just iron them to create crease lines, then you can use that as a guide to print on. So I'm going to give this a good wiggle because it's quite a big block and then up and then I'm going to print my next one next door. So I'll do all four in the centre first and then work my way out. So again, bottom left corner down to the very centre next to my last print and then you've got that pivot point that you can move the block. So 
So, I've got my four prints in the very centre and I'm so happy with how they've come out. The colour blending is lovely. I've managed to print each print right next to the other. I've got a small millimetre gap in between each print, but I've got them very close together. So now what I like to do is I like to do each section at a time. So I've got three more prints to do in each section. So I'm going to do that to keep straight. What I would say is always work from the inside out, remember? So don't go and do your first one in the top corner because it might make you a bit wonky. Always line your next print up against the one you did previously. I'll speed this bit up as it'll be quite boring for you to watch me do the whole thing. But I'm just going to continue with this technique until I'm finished. When you're using the same printing block over and over again, you can sometimes find that the paint starts to fill up the design, especially with something like a repeat printing block, because you're using it over and over again, it can become a little bit clogged. So what you can do is just wipe the block back down, clean it of all the paint. You can even give it a wash under the sink to clear all the paint out the detail dry it off again and then apply your paint again and that will keep the printing block printing very crisp and clear. So do bear that in mind, sometimes people just keep continuing when it gets a bit cloggy but it's definitely the right time to then stop, clean the block off and then start again. So I'm very nearly finished with this, I've got two prints left and it looks gorgeous. All my prints have lined up really well and having those straight lines to follow has really helped. And you can see I've got this thin border around the outside but that's going to give me a very neat and clean finished look. If you do print something like this in the repeat and you have any little mistakes, you can always go back in with a fine detailed paintbrush at the end and fix anything. But I promise you, you'll probably spot little mistakes but nobody else will. And there we go, my finished three colour pattern tile cushion cover. Now I'm going to let this dry and then what you can do is you can always print the other side in the same design, you could do the same design but a different colour way, so maybe I'll do teal in the middle and then sage and yellow on the outside just to create a different pattern. But see how you feel or you could do a completely different block and have it as a two sided different cushion cover so that you can see how you're feeling and swap it over. But I'm going to let this dry and I'll show you where I get to. And here is my finished cushion cover. So once it was totally dry, popped it on the ironing board, gave it a very good iron and heat set the fabric and then it was then ready for my inner pad and now it's ready to go on my garden furniture outside. So hopefully that's shown you the basic tips of how to use a repeat printing block. It's shown you the different kind of techniques you can use, that there's a few different levels of printing blocks. So if you're looking to start out with repeat printing, I suggest going for one like the one I've used that just needs to be printed right next to the last print and then there's no connecting and it is a lot easier and kind of stress free. So I hope you will now have a go at printing your own repeat pattern cushion cover. All the printing blocks and paints and cushion covers that I've used in today's video can be found on our website www.theartycraftplace.co.uk Thanks very much.